Hello and welcome to Man on the Run's first tutorial on the Road Less Traveled series. My name is Patrick Barrett. I'm the uh, executive producer and did the special effects for the Road Less Traveled series. I'm uh, going to show you today a scene from Road Less Traveled 3 where we have to take and make it look like uh, Damien Locke, played by Joe Holt, has jumped out a window across a large gap over to uh, the top of the stairs right here. So uh, basically we're taking this raw footage we have of Joe at the top of the stairs and then him falling down to make it look like he had just jumped across. And we're going to turn around and make it look like this where he's actually jumping across the entire way and out the window with breaking and everything. So the first thing uh, we have to do, uh, if we note here, is we have uh, Anthony Hagen over here on the right covering up Joe on on part of it but Joe still shows through so one we have to cut Joe out of that to make sure he doesn't look like he's there uh, two we have to deal with the reflection from this side of the screen where he actually shows we have to build something in to make it look like the window has broken in multiple pieces and then the glass that's actually breaking everywhere uh, then after that we have to deal with uh, the logistics of how it how it looks, how natural it is, reflections and other things um, to try to, to make it look as, uh, as real as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the glass element. Uh, I'm going to jump over here. I have uh, uh, this little element called Falling Glass 06. This is actually a, uh, a piece out of an effects package, you can uh, you can find them online for free. But uh, the nicer quality ones, normally they're larger packages you can buy. One of my favorite uh, effects package creators is VideoCopilot.net. There's a guy Andrew Kramer over there uh, who does some great tutorials and uh, sells some great products. And and, and this is uh, in one of them. And what it is is uh, a variety of different glass effects. But this one in particular uh, actually fits our needs. It looks like it's partially broken glass, and then as it ex you uh, you go through, it looks like something's been punched through it, and you have nice glass breakage and, and, and reflections and everything going through. There's great transparency in there, so you can actually get your video to show through and so so on. So uh, what I've done is uh, taken a little copy of our footage, and I've right-clicked on it and made it a guide layer which basically means it it won't show up whenever we pre-compose all of these elements uh, into another composition the other is I've broken up uh, this element into multiple pieces and that's because of just some jaggedness to the animation that I like to cut out so I cut out individual frames and trimmed it down so now that we have all of this we're gonna jump in and take it into our main footage and we're gonna start uh, to add those elements on top so the first one is the animation of the glass breaking the the window itself. Now what I've done is taken a mask and what that means is I am highlighting a specific area that I can either add, remove, um, or so on with, uh, with video footage to, to layer things together. What I do is take a pin tool and I can draw a little area here to say that this particular window that I want to subtract out. Now you see I have this black element. And what I can do is over time as things go through I can animate that element to break more uh, or less, uh, expand, contract, and so on. So for this one I'm, I'm actually going to delete the, uh, the element itself. I'm going to use the mask we already have and zoom in here just to give you an idea. And What I've done is on the, uh, the first frame it, uh, it doesn't show up at all. So on the second frame I have a jagged edge to make it look like something's breaking through and then on the next frame it explodes to make it look like the whole window has gone through. And what happens is, is uh, whenever I zoom out and I turn off the masks you'll be able to see it looks like a nice little animation of the window breaking open. The next element we're going to do is take the glass itself. So that uh, falling glass composition we had, we're going to line it up to show where the element is so that it's not there, but as soon as the glass break happens in the hole we made, the glass is now exploding out, so it's a big jarring. And then from there, uh, it's going to animate out and 
fly everywhere and you get the reflection you can see through the glass and it's going and hitting everything but as you note um, it's on top of Anthony right here in the bottom left uh, but otherwise it's it's being blocked by everything else which is which is what we want um, out here it doesn't matter the, f the the scene doesn't go out that far it actually cuts right here so that's perfect um, and how to accomplish that again is using the same concept of a mask of cutting stuff out so what I've done is color coded these masks to give you an idea of how this is actually working so this is on the glass element I want to cut out in this green the whole beam all the little jagged lines you actually see here I went down and meticulously went through all the jagged lines um, and that's one little section the next is going to be the yellow lines here that come out and it actually cuts out all the staircases and everything else and then this little blue section cuts out the handrail and that way as the glass is animating out if you see the glass does not show up in that particular area now there's a few little animations in there that I have um, that I'll I can explain a little bit in, in, in later, but the, the the basic gist of it is is that's to help with extra glass elements. I don't want flying out too quickly yet. I don't want them noticed, uh, and that's just because it doesn't match the scene perfectly. So uh, the next animation uh, of the mask is uh, outside of just where it's cutting around your your solid scene. Is now we have to deal with the fact that Joe's at the top. So um, to do that what I have here is uh, a mask that's animated around Anthony and his head so as I move forward I every single frame have moved the animation of the mask to cover him up but not what's behind and then what I can do after that is I take the next element of a, uh, a blank slate which uh, if I actually take out the masks just to show you here all it is is a, uh, a blank slate where there's actually nothing there and I'm taking two more masks one is around Anthony and one is around this nice little window so what happens is if I uh, subtract this again oh, let me go backwards Here we go. So I'm adding one part of the mask, and what that is is the uh, the part around Anthony. I want to add and cover him up. The second part, um, oh, sorry, it's the other way around. This is the edge of the window, and this is Anthony. So the window I'm cutting out from that blank slate, and I'm covering Joe up, and then I'm using another mask here to cover to use Anthony to cover that up. And what that does here is as Anthony is moving up you don't see Joe standing there but if I turn this slate off see there he is I'm, I'm basically just covering him up and then what we do is as Anthony walks on it's animated around his shirt because we don't want that to cut Anthony out we just want it to cut Joe out and as we animate all the way up it goes around his shirt it moves around as he ducks down it covers Joe the whole time so now that we've actually added him back in the last little quick easy one to do is we have a reflection of Joe over here that I want to get rid of so it's the same exact concept I take a blank slate there's nothing in this slate but that window and I take and I tell it to add on top which means that um, if I actually just show what this footage looks like that's all that's there so it kinda just lays on top and covers up and you don't even notice that it looks any different from the rest of the footage so now that covers the rest of it so now there's no reflection breaking open a window exploding glass and Joe's been gone and then been taken away and as you see at the end there we there he is falling. So the next step is to actually create a version of Locke uh, or, or Joe jumping out the window. So to do that, 
what I've done is uh, is taken another mask of the raw footage of Joe. So I have this footage of Joe right here where he was falling down at the top. And I take one snippet of his footage. And then I come in here and I take a little mask and I draw around his body. And this is what it would look like. So I have a highly detailed mask that just goes around his body and cuts out his image. And then what I take from there is I tell him to subtract him out. Add just means add what's inside. So whenever I do that now, I have a little tiny Joe Holt. Now the next part to that is I can take the position of it and I, I put in keyframes of how the position is and I arc it. And that's where these little keyframes come in. So I arc it from one side so it looks like he's in, breaks through, he arcs through and he hits the ground. So a simple little arc so it looks like he goes from above down to below. The next thing I do is uh, add in a few details to, to make him look blurry so uh, it gives that natural blur to his image whenever uh, whenever he's falling. Um, hope, hopefully make it look a little more realistic. So the next step is to add that into the main footage. What we're going to do is come back to that same spot where everything explodes. And now because uh, he's in the same element of where the glass is, we duplicate out the masks that cut out where Anthony is and where this beam is. And whenever I do that and move forward, you'll see as he comes through, he's behind all of that element now. So it looks like he's... Otherwise, let's say if I, if I had nothing on here, it looks like he's on top of it, um, which is what you don't want. So I need to subtract. So he's behind that element and flying and he's right behind the glass. So the glass is flying out in front of him and it looks like he's just coming straight down. Now there's other little tweaks that we can do. There's a, the secondary mask that was duplicated out again to uh, make sure uh, Anthony is not covered up by, by Joe's feet. Um, and, uh, and that covers the basis of him jumping through the window. Now the last part is well, we had these big mirrored windows, um, so you should be able to see a reflection in it. So I, I took that element of Joe, and I reversed him, pointed him down in three dimensions, and then I, I duplicated all the same masks out for these beams, for this area, but then I added an extra masks where I cut out his reflection on the beams where the windows connect. And that's because, of course, there wouldn't be a reflection there. So if I show you right in the middle, if I turn these off, you'll see there's no reflection of him on the beams. But if I did, say, turn all of those off, um, you see his reflection would be on the beam, which is, of course, not what we want. Just to, again, make it a little more realistic. Um, outside of the masks, I took and I made him 3D and I tilted his orientation so that he looks like he's going into the actual building because it's a reflection. So whenever we do this again, they meet up right here. You see the reflection in the glass. They're in the same area. And then they both hit roughly where the stairs are at the same exact time. So last thing. Uh, why don't you throw it all together here? You can add in a sound effect or, or something else like that. But um, now we put in the footage that's before where he's jumping, and then we put in the footage after. So whenever we do that and I put this all together, it looks like this. Now the last thing I did, um, which I'm not going to go through, is uh, you can do something like there's a big explosion. I make it shake the camera a little bit right whenever he comes out. And then it, since he's right there, we had a nice cut directly to Joe again falling at the top of the stairs with our other actors. And as you see, there's glass being thrown on him. But what that actually is is a nice little trick of instead of making your own fake glass, you take cookie sheets and fill them with water and freeze them. And we bring him to set. And uh, when when Joe falls down, you just throw 
the sheet of ice at him and it breaks and it makes a great sound and it looks like glass breaking um, so another cheap easy way to be able to do stuff there so uh, that is how you throw somebody out of a window uh, thank you for watching and uh, hopefully here in the near future I'll be going through and uh, doing some other special effects from the Road Less Traveled series uh, if you have any uh, tips questions or uh, effects from the movies you've seen that you'd uh, like me to try out let me know in the comments thanks again